you are swimming. Sharky, in that video clip, you're swimming at 148 per 100. Uh, Sharky, uh, sorry, uh, Alex, you're swimming here at 125 per 100 meters. Stroke rate of 70 strokes per minute. Um, but we're going to see a very, very strong leg kick indeed. And if we take a little look at this off the wall, this is where our little stopwatch comes into play. If we look at it on the time down, down the bottom here, look, 6.5 seconds there on the clock. Adam, do you maybe want to tell the lifeguard that um, Alex can get contact with him? Even get him to come up here because we're just going to be a little bit longer up in the classroom here. 6.5 seconds on the clock. Let's see when we touch the end of the pool. Whoops. We're just turning there. Uh, so that first lap look is taking you 19 seconds, so that's an average average pace of 116 per 100, and we know that you finished on 125, so potentially you've gone off a little bit too quick. Um, so when you're working with the swimmer, don't be afraid to have a little look, not just at the technique, but also the way they first pace themselves out. Love the clearance over the top of the water, love the very positive hand entry into the water. We had, a, uh, we had three male bambinos last week on the swimmer's course, and one of the things that they all look like they're lacking is that sort of positivity of the way their hand was going into the water. It's more of a sort of like a very gentle, don't want to hurt the water type of thing. Yours is the complete opposite of that. It's, it's not slappy, but it's very positive. I like the sort of, I like the gusto that you've got with that. Um, just needs to be, in the same respect as Janet, just needs to be a little bit careful about that hand look coming into the water pretty much exactly the same time as the elbow. So you could actually bring your entry into the water just a little bit closer towards the head. Closer towards the head. Just a little, only like two or three centimetres. We look at the big strong leg kick here. Now if you were 50 metres, 100 metres, 200 metres freestyle specialist, that sort of leg kick is going to be required. Once we get into the longer distance stuff, we need to be a little bit careful. Exhalation happening mainly from your nose as opposed to from the mouth. Now that's not a necessarily wrong thing. Some swimmers will benefit exhaling better from the nose, some people better from the mouth, etc or even a combination of the two. I would encourage you to maybe sort of calm things down a little bit, keep pacing out, having a little go exhaling from the mouth. And we're gonna do that we're gonna do that tomorrow as a group in the pool, seeing which works best for you. Head position, because your body position is strong, you're able to look far forwards, but if you were toning down the leg kick to make this a little bit more maintainable, you might find you need to bring the just the head position a smidgen down. Love the arm position look. So that nice positive hand entry into the water carries through into the stroke. Look at that. Fingertips below the wrist, wrist below the elbow, very nice indeed. Right from the front part of the stroke here, you're actually getting that traction on the water. And if we look at it from the, from the front, we see quite a nice bend at the elbow. On this right hand side, potentially closing up the angle just a little bit too much. See that there, look? So, 74 degrees, needs to be about 100 to 120. <coughs> Why is this an issue? Well, we mentioned there with, uh, with Sarah and, Re and with Becky Stroke, we both have strong leg kicks, that their arm pull through tends to be quite straight. On the converse side of things, if we bend the elbow too much, if the body's cutting this hole through the water, all the water around this little yellow circle here is actually being disturbed. If your hand is pulling too close to the walls, that yellow circle, you're essentially pulling the disturbed water. Getting you to reach a little bit deeper will actually open out the, uh, open out the armpit a little bit, get you utilising the pecs and the lats a little bit better to press the water back behind you. If you look at it on this side, much better position, much better depth. So I wouldn't, even though you're kicking very strongly, it looks like you're sort of powering your way through. I wouldn't classify you as a pure kick-tastic like I might do with the, with the ladies. Um, I'd suggest though that the amount of force that we're putting into there would be problematic for long distance. So if I was working with you on this, we'd be doing a little bit of work, toning down the leg kick, improving that right side catch a little bit, and then just generally getting you much better at pacing yourself out and, uh, and doing the right sort of training sets too. Is your, is your, you mentioned that a lot of the swimmers you're working with are, are sprinters, but is your background more? No. So this is long distance, yeah, okay. So you feel like you'd swim quite differently to that if I... Long distance, I usually do Ah, there we go. Yeah, cool. So you might you might be, you know, we talked about Reese being the, the perfect smooth, somebody who can adapt and change, two beats, six beat, open water in the pool. You might be Reese Maidstone, which that would be a very good compliment if you are, you know. So 
if you can adapt and change, you can adapt to change like that. But it's it's probably quite a good example. I didn't refilm really you there because I thought this would be a really good example to show you. Coach is, a, is an example of an athlete who does present really quite well on the video. Uh, you can identify a couple of little things, but then when you're looking through at the the speed in which they're swimming, look, there's quite a drop off between the first lap and the uh, and the last lap. So going from about 116 down to about 125. It's actually just a little bit, it's about 123 and a half, I think, actually. But there is a rate of drop off there. So sometimes you might be looking and thinking, how, how the heck can I improve the swimmer? I had a lady last year, a girl who holds the world record in Kona uh, as an age group female athlete, Catherine Foe. Has anyone heard of Catherine Foe? Brilliant swimmer. She came, oh, sorry, brilliant athlete, brilliant triathlete. She said, I, I need to get my swim time down for about 58, 59 minutes down to you know, the low 50s. I said, okay, get in the water, let's film you. So we filmed her swimming, and technically she looked awesome. And she was mega disappointed that she looked awesome. <laughs> because she think, well, how am I going to get the six-minute improvement that I'm looking for? Her training went through, her coach, Judith Brand, was sat there, and we went through the sort of concepts about the type of training set she should be doing and stuff. Very much on par with what I'd be recommending. So I'm thinking, oh, what do we do now? So then I started asking about open water skills. The first thing she says was, I hate swimming in a group. I hate. Swim. I, I don't get chance to practice in the open water. I'm not very good at drafting and those sort of things. So with her, it was then all about trying to say, okay, well, how can we make your open water skills better to get those improvements? You know, so for her, it's not going to come from the technique in the pool. Maybe 20 seconds or something. Maybe in terms of the time type of training set she's doing, we gave her a little beeper to make sure she's a little bit more objective with her sessions. That might help a little bit. But ultimately, it's down to the open water skills. And I think the same for yourself here. Get, getting those working a little bit better. And, uh, and I'd love to. See Maybe later on, or maybe tomorrow, I'll have a look at when you go to the two big kick there. But uh, yeah, you might well be Reese Maidstone, which is, uh, which is good. What sort of times do you post in uh, in races? But I'm a. Yeah. What, one hour 14? Yeah. Uh, for the 3.8? Oh, 4.2, okay. Yeah. So, so you haven't done a 3.8 then, or? Yeah, it's 3.8, but I, because of the... Ah, right, 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 okay, 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 okay. So there you go, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, again, let's see open water skills and looking at... Looking at. You are drafting, you said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So okay. It's, it's very important that even when you're drafting, of course, to make sure that um, you're keeping a bit of an eye on things on things for yourself. Uh, given the fact that you're swimming here at the speed that you're swimming at, you, you should definitely, especially with the right type of training and the open water skills, you should definitely be swimming like some 56, 57 minutes, if not. Yeah. I'm moving to 105. 105. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I, you should definitely, I, I can definitely see you breaking out. Yeah. yeah so, uh, anyway, so in terms of the uh, type of Type of drills, etc. Again, sculling and the doggy paddle drill, just to get you reaching a little bit deeper with that right hand, would be useful. I think you're going to get a lot of benefit from just working on the on the pacing side of things. And I'll talk a little bit with the tempo trainer. Yeah. So what we'll do tomorrow is when we analyse all of your CSS paces, we can work out. Let's say your threshold pace works out at let's use 140 per 100 meters. So 140 per 100 is 25 seconds per 25 meters. On the beeper in mode one, we can plug in 25.00 get you to do a training set at 25, hit all the target times, you go away happy. Next week, you can drop it down by 15 one hundredths of a second and get you to do the same session just a little bit quicker. And then slowly and surely over time, you can start chipping away at it. And prior to actually utilizing these tempo trainers on a, on a structured, objective basis like that, people often just say, I don't feel like I'm improving, I feel like I'm on a bit of a plateau. It can simply be, you know, that are just not objectively, you haven't got a plan behind it. And uh, that's what we'll go through a lot. On tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's session there, cool. So yeah, I thought uh, I thought you're looking quite nice here. Just uh, pacing just concerns me a little bit, and certainly if you're saying you're only swimming about 114, that uh, highlights that even more for me, especially with the weaving around. 